While the World Guardian is by far the most iconic figure in the world of Gilinor, there are many other heroes and warriors throughout the world. Six of these, collectively known as the Signature Heroes, have popped up at various times and places along the adventurer's journey. Today we look at the history and lives of Ariane and Ozan. My name's Galaxy Shark and this is RuneScape Lore. Raised by her grandparents, Ariane was born in the Sears village and as such inherited the precognitive abilities of her predecessors. These abilities became visible at a very young age, which was strange. Usually, Sears would not have such premonitions until they were older, and because of this, the locals decided that Ariane could one day be one of the greatest Sears to ever live. Fittingly for a group of Sears who could see into the future, this prediction was not far from the truth. After training for some time, and writing perhaps one of the most well-written applications to the Wizard's Tower the Archmage had ever seen, Ariane was accepted into the Wizard's Tower. Seeing that this was the way forward for her, she left her hometown and teleported to the tower where she would live from that point on. Unfortunately for the young mage, her roommate Caitlin developed a disliking towards Ariane, seeing that her powers were inherited and not earned. This disliking would eventually spread to the other jealous classmates, so it did not take Ariane much time to realise that she was not welcome. While Ariane was not the most social character, not being accepted into her class greatly upset her. This led Ariane to wizard Eleron, who would help her overcome this hurdle. Originally, Ariane had hoped that Eleron would teach her to suppress her inherited powers and allow her to develop magical abilities from scratch, but the more experienced wizard taught her another way of overcoming her predicament. Instead of suppressing her powers, she was taught to embrace it, discover how it actually worked and how she could use that knowledge to improve. This strategy was successful, Ariane discovered that her premonitions, which had previously been seemingly spontaneous and random, were actually brought on by sensations of pain or fear. With this knowledge, Ariane could put herself in danger and use the fear to see into the future and harness the psychic powers of a seer to their full extent. She also gained significant experience and skill in conventional magic. While the aforementioned discovery was hugely beneficial to the mage, it would soon appear to be a curse rather than a blessing. One day, Ariane attempted to see further into the future than she had ever done before by talking to Azakarax, the lesser demon in the wizard's tower. The two struck a deal wherein Ariane would offer her blood to Zamorak, aligning herself with the god of chaos, and in return Azakarax would share its vast wealth of knowledge with her. She never actually gave her blood, but the threat of doing so allowed her to get the knowledge she needed. While the demon was not sure what exactly had happened, it knew it had been tricked, and shouted, Hail worshipper of Zamorak, your allegiance is gladly accepted, making the other wizards believe Ariane had aligned herself with Zamorak, and leading to her expulsion from the Saradominus Tower. Following this, she met Xenia, an experienced adventurer who offered her a place to stay. It was from this point that Ariane began the life of an adventurer. These adventures took her far and wide, but in general, had one of two goals. Ariane was either in search of more knowledge to improve her magical ability, or tracking down the more nefarious people for the greater good of Gilinor, be it the Majorat Lucian in the north, or the Beastmaster Khan, who fled into Demonheim after kidnapping Pickup Sticks the Druid. Eventually, the adventures of Ariane would bring her into the presence of the World Guardian, who she would work with on several occasions. Potentially the most notable of these occasions was when the pair discovered the ancient ruins of the first Wizard's Tower, and put an end to Wizard Eleron's plot to destroy the modern one. Following this, Ariane would return to the tower one last time. This time, she was found by the World Guardian, caught up in an argument with Xenia over the murder of one of their mutual friends, Pablo Cavusa. The confrontation resulted in Xenia teleporting away, and Ariane, with her ally the adventurer, dragging all across Gilinor, aided by a runic android named Kippel. This journey led the pair to discover a series of caverns closely tied to the sleeping Elder Gods. Unfortunately, the worst possible scenario came from this. Xenia and Ariane, who had been friends and allies for years, discussed the waking of the Elder Gods and their differing opinions on the event. Seeing that Xenia's idea would put the magic of Gilinor at risk, Ariane fired a magical blast at her friend, killing her. Since then, Ariane has had little involvement with the adventurer, but has likely continued her own travels and research throughout the world of Gilinor. The somewhat antisocial, brutally honest personality of Ariane is a stark contrast against Ozan, the next signature hero. Ozan was born in Al-Karid, the northernmost city in the Caridian Desert, 
where he was raised by his mother. His father was noticeably absent, with the boy learning very little about the man's identity before his mother's untimely demise. Ozan was still young when his mother died, but was by this point old enough to sustain himself, albeit through somewhat illicit means. After committing several minor thefts around the city, Ozan would eventually gain an acquaintance, in the form of Noom, one of the palace guards. A fair time after their meeting, the friendship would meet its end. Specific details of this event are hard to find, as Ozan infamously embellished many of his stories to paint himself in a much better light than reality. What is known for definite is that he somehow ended up infiltrating the palace and entering the room containing the Carid Eeb, a magical diamond infused with part of Tumekin's essence. Ozan was caught shortly after and banished from al -Karid. Noom, who had made no effort to arrest Ozan at any point, was fired, being blamed for enabling him. Much like Ariane, being banished from the place he called home sparked his desire for adventure. In the following years, Ozan travelled far and wide, stealing incredible treasures and sharing his questionably accurate stories, becoming a living legend amongst the bards of the world. He even formed alliances with other signature heroes, often being the calm, laid-back one of the group. Towards the end of the Fifth Age, the paths of Ozan and the adventurer eventually crossed, much like with Ariane. The first interaction between the two occurred in Berthorpe, during the Troll Invasion. After teaming up to fight Morningstar, a powerful troll general, Ozan found a small baby troll and left it in the possession of the adventurer, who would have most likely been able to take better care of the creature. Their paths would cross once again sometime later, in Draenor. As it turned out, Ozan's old friend, Noom, had become the leader of a gang known to the Skulls. After sneaking into his headquarters and interrogating the gang leader, a dark twist was revealed. The Skulls had been commissioned by a mysterious figure known as Lady Kelly to kidnap Prince Ali, son of the ruler of al -Karid. Clearly this was cause for concern, especially after Leela, daughter of the lead palace guard Osman, met the pair and informed them of the weight of the situation. Understandably, as the prince was missing, the city was in lockdown, so a break-in was required. After forcibly entering the palace and overhearing a discussion between the Emir, ruler of al -Karid, Osman, Hassan, and a Menophyte called Jabari, the threat of a war became very real. Following an intense discussion, Ozan was given the Karid Eeb, the diamond he had attempted to steal many years before. Alongside the adventurer, the gemstone was used to find an ancient temple, dedicated to the deity Amaskat. Here, a fight broke out, with several of Lady Kelly's lackeys being killed, and the prince being rescued. During the skirmish, it was revealed that Lady Kelly was in fact a mascot, just after she had obtained the stone, much to the regret of Ozan. Once the conflict had settled, Leela and the adventurer returned to al -Karid with Prince Ali, but Ozan would not follow them, deciding that he would not return without the Karadib. The thief disappeared for many years, searching far and wide throughout the desert, hoping to find a mascot and the Karadib. A few years into the Sixth Age, when the conflicts in Menophos had begun to heat up, Ozan managed to smuggle his way inside the Golden City, under the guise of the Jack of Spades. Once inside, he returned to his old ways, stealing from people all over the city and becoming an infamous figure. His thefts reached their peak when he stole from four of the most prolific figures in the city, the leaders of each faction. It was this set of crimes that led the adventurer, who had recently arrived in the city, to Ozan. Sometime later, Commander Akhmet requested that the Jack of Spades be brought to justice, and in return she would aid in the coup against the Pharaoh. Neither the adventurer nor Ozan particularly wanted to see the Jack of Spades arrested or killed, so they devised a cunning plot. The iconic hood of the Jack was stained with blood and taken to Akhmet, with the story going that the Jack of Spades had been burnt on a pyre, with only the hood remaining. Following this, Ozan remained hidden in the shifting tombs below the city, where he still hides to this day. It's very possible that both Ariane and Ozan will become relevant once again in the near future. Ariane will soon face the reality of the Elder Gods, the threat that led to the death of her friend, and Ozan may stand against Osman, the new tyrannical pharaoh of Menophos. Until then, little more can be said about the pair. As mentioned earlier though, there are four other signature heroes. Make sure to subscribe to get notified when I upload part 2 and 3 of this extra long RuneScape lore episode, when we delve into the pasts of Xenia, Linza, Sir Owen and the Raptor. I've been Aris Galaxy Shark, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.